Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Salam Akbul, with you at PTV World. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the very important SEO summit that is being hosted by Pakistan next week. And this is, of course, extremely important in terms of Pakistan's international position and, of course, what we hope to gain from this regional uh, summit. And it's important also in terms of the key players that are involved in this uh, particular summit and, of course, the fact that we'll be able to discuss the kind of issues that affect the entire region and, of course, the member states. And this is important to Pakistan, especially in terms of security issues, environmental concerns, and of course, economic ties with the member states. So what is also, of course, more important is the, the participation by the heads of the member state, including the prime ministers of Russia and China, and of course, uh, members, uh, representatives of other member states as well, that will be joining in and the way that we're going to be taking this forward. It's also going to be important in terms of the participation by India and what sort of discussions can actually take place when we talk about regional cooperation, collaboration on multiple fronts. We're also going to be talking a little bit about, of course, security measures that need to be put in place, particularly when we talk about the fact that a recent incident in uh, Karachi near the Karachi airport has resulted in the targeting and uh, the eventual killing of uh, two Chinese nationals. It's extremely important for Pakistan to, in order to ensure security of all personnel that are going to be part of this summit, including, of course, state level guests. And this is important also in terms of the way that we're going to be taking a look forward in collaborative avenues with the regional states, particularly China as well. So that is going to be our focus in the first segment of the show today. Our next one is going to be taking a look at the very important day that is being observed and celebrated today, the International Day of the Girl Child. And of course, this becomes extremely important um, in the context of Pakistan as well um, and of course the world over where we talk about issues affecting a certain gender and of course the ways in which we can encourage and promote uh, the girl child and especially uh, provide them the protection and safety that they require the potential and the avenues uh, that can be and should be provided to them and that of course equal opportunities for all and this of course is going to be important particularly when we talk about in the ways in which Pakistan can also help its own female population and how we are going to move forward with that so that is going to be our focus in the second segment of the show today where we're going to try and understand the problems that we face today with regards to this and of course the solutions that can be provided in this regard. For this and more, as always in the studios, I've been joined by senior analyst Farooq Batafi and we've also been joined in our studios uh, by Mr. Jora Salim, who's the former Foreign Secretary and President of IRS. Thank you very much, guests, for joining us. And we're also going to be joined online by Brigadier Retired Mr. Bakar Khan, who's a senior analyst and he's going to be joining us very soon. I'll start with you, Ambassador Sub. The situation that we see previously, of course, um, as part of the SEO summit, uh, there is a lot of discussion in terms of what Pakistan can hope to achieve from it, what will be the key takeaways. It's a very big opportunity and, of course, a, a, a very important responsibility for Pakistan to host this particular summit. But what, of course, is going to be even more integral and important are the discussions that are going to be held and the ways that we're going to see um, uh, more initiatives uh, being born out of these discussions and more collaborative avenues being explored. And so when we talk about the SEO in particular as a platform and what all can be achieved from it, I want your take in terms of how important the summit is for the country and what sort of collaborative avenues can be looked at through SEO um, in which these member states can play a major role. Thank you. Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or SEO, is an intergovernmental, interregional organization and uh, one of the biggest in the world. It involves 40% of the world population in terms of its membership. Again, in terms of the world GDP, we're talking about 32% of the world GDP, or, or roughly one third. So 10 members um, include some of the uh, largest countries in the world in terms of population, three regions, that is uh, Central Asia, uh, or West Asia, Eurasia, uh, South Asia, and also uh, East Asia. Um, so it is an inter-regional rather than just a regional cooperation organization. Mm. This is the first time that Pakistan would be holding a summit level event of this organization in its 23 year history. Pakistan did become a member in 2017 before it had an observer status. SU has two summits in a year. One is the head of state level summit, which was last held in July in uh, Kazakhstan, Astana. And then this is the head of government level summit. The head of government level summit, which is taking place in Pakistan, uh, focuses primarily on uh, economic issues, uh, issues of trade, connectivity, then climate resilience cooperation, but also issues such as security cooperation 
and cooperation in the field of counterterrorism. In fact, SCO has a mechanism called RATS, or Regional Anti-Terrorism Structure. And that has been a very important part of this organization because the countries which are members of this SCO, they have all faced terrorism emanating from within, the, uh, within the re their own regions. And that is why um, they collaborate and uh, cooperate in terms of their counterterrorism efforts as well. Uh, as you've already mentioned, um, the heads of governments of these member countries would be arriving in Pakistan um, in the coming days, and it's, it's a two days event. Uh, it, it provides excellent um, opportunity for um, exchange of views, for building cooperation, for discussing ways of, and means to further enhance cooperation in the areas and there's a, a whole range of areas which it covers, even within the uh, economic <coughs> sphere. For instance, poverty elevation, for instance, trade and connectivity, uh, for instance, uh, cooperation in poverty, you know, like uh, climate resilience, mm. uh, and so many other areas. So, so we are very looking forward to it uh, because this will provide Pakistan an opportunity at a time when Pakistan is looking w very keenly to build uh, further linkages, economic linkages, connectivity linkages with countries within the region and countries beyond our, our region. So I think this provides us with that opportunity to involve the member countries of SCO, uh, particularly since our connectivity plans, they always had Central Asia in mind, they always had China mm. in view. Uh, we, we, we have this mechanism of CPAC, and CPAC wants to do what? It wants to uh, connect Central Asia uh, through Pakistan to Arabian Sea. Again, it wants to connect uh, Western China uh, through Pakistan to Arabian Sea, which, which has uh, some of the busiest shipping routes in terms of trade and energy trade in the world. And um, in that way, CPEC and SCO's objectives align very much as well. Mm. So I believe um, that in the coming days, we will see some very important discussions taking place which would help Pakistan towards its endeavors to further enhance its economic cooperation within the region and beyond the region. Right, absolutely. Um, and Farooq, just yesterday we were talking about um, particularly China and of course Pakistan's relationship with yeah. that country and how through the SEO summit we aim to enhance it even further as well. And of course with the Prime Minister visiting a day earlier. Um, we also of course have the Russian Prime Minister who's visiting Pakistan and I want your take on that relationship as well. Um, and then of course uh, see it in the larger context um, of not only our bilateral engagement but of course through SEO the multilateral engagement that is possible with China and other member states and whether or not SEO could be the right platform for that. Uh, right, uh, Sana, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, as we were discussing yesterday, there is immense potential in this body. And uh, there's potential regarding uh, these four uh, areas, the broad areas that uh, Ambassador Saab has already pointed out, especially uh, counterterrorism, uh, climate change, economic uh, cooperation, and regional stabilization. I think that this kind of potential, and given that almost half of the world's population is sitting uh, in uh, SEO countries, because of that you have a lot of hope that, that, is, that can be found there. Of course, there are going to be regional animus, there is going to be uh, you know, some friction among countries as well. India, Pakistan are two examples mm -hmm. which keep on aspiring all the time. But despite that, uh, uh, the important thing is that this region is also exposed to dramatic uh, climate change uh, challenges, right? Pakistan saw the kind of floods, the uh, biblical proportion of uh, floods uh, two years ago. Similarly, there are parts of India that will uh, become very warm in very short period of time. So th these are competitions that are important. Regarding Russia, as I pointed out uh, yesterday as well, I've been advocating for a, co a cooperation between Pakistan and Russia since I think 1996, 97. And the whole idea was that whatever negativity the two sides had uh, ended with Cold War and there is immense potential, they are uh, you know, beautiful people on both sides, uh, so why not actually work together? So uh, the biggest problem, uh, unlike ch with China or India, Pakistan does not share any border with uh, Russia. 
of course, we, uh, a, you know, share borders with the near Abadad uh, and then Afghanistan, and Afghanistan hasn't been stable. But today, I thought that when President Zardari met President Putin, mm. and after that, we also saw, uh, seen that the Prime Minister of Russia is coming to Pakistan, there's great hope that we might also be able to unlock the uh, potential of a Eurasian bloc. Uh, remember that these are two uh, distinct realities. One is BRI, Pakistan is part of CPAC, and which is very important. Then there is Eurasian bloc state, and uh, one hopes that uh, in coming days there is a possibility of convergence of both. And because Pakistan has been, uh, there uh, used to be this uh, um, uh, St. Peter's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Peter, Peter the Great's bill, and that was excess of Russia to hot waters. And uh, although those days are gone, but cooperation can uh, ensure that Pakistan can provide that kind of access as well. And meanwhile, Pakistan's own dream mm. of becoming a regional hub of trade, that al also can be realized. The only problem, Sana, is that while we keep on exploring the potential of north-south uh, trade, we haven't been able to do it with the east-west uh, uh, you know, trade because of India, their, their attitude and their temper tantrums. If we are able to uh, convince them they, that there is a lot of cooperation that can be found there, there's great potential. I'm sure that someday we will be able to come up with the kind of program that enhances both countries' uh, capabilities. Mm. One last thing. When I was talking about climate change, uh, when you look at the list of countries which are most exposed to climate change, uh, Pakistan is at number eight, and India is also at number eight. We are conjoined twins. We don't realize that whatever happens in one country, climate-wise, it is going to have an impact on the other as well. Somehow, because there's a government, ideologically driven government in New Delhi. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to communicate it, but there's a possibility we might be able to do it now. Mm. Absolutely, and that is, of course, extremely important. Uh, Brigadier Vakar has also joined us online. Uh, Brigadier Vakar, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great, excellent. Uh, Brigadier Vakar, I also want your views on the SUS summit as a whole, and of course, what Pakistan's expectations or um, key takeaways um, hopefully would be from this summit, but also add to that, particularly when we talk about um, uh, the different member states, including India, and the perspective that that brings to the entire uh, summit as well. Uh, what sort of a role do you think that um, uh, India can also play in this regard in terms of the SDO summit um, and in terms of a collaborative or joint um, uh, uh, possible future that we're looking at as part of this platform? Will that, uh, will that actually happen? Will India actually allow uh, this this uh, particular platform to flourish um, with respect to whatever its bilateral relations may be with Pakistan or China and the fact that SEO can uh, be that platform uh, to put uh, the um, the issues that that affect us collectively um, on a much higher level than those uh, that perhaps engage, we engage with bilaterally. I think Pakistan is at the center stage and I remember we had two visits to Russia in some uh, capacity and one of Russian friends says that Pakistan is a zipper of civilization. It's not only geography. Uh, you have the Persian civilization, the Middle Eastern, the Russian, the Chinese, and the Indian. And uh, everything converges there. So it's a very, very interesting analogy with SCO today uh, that as uh, we hold the summit of 10 great nations, uh, Pakistan will be hosting it. Uh, so it, it really becomes the uh, zipper of all these uh, civilizations and nations. And if you look at the SCO charter, I think it was explained by Ambassador Saab, and Pratafi Saab, that uh, it does, there's a huge, uh, I would say, area of uh, convergence and huge potential, 32% of global GDP by purchasing power parity. And if you look at the, I think, demographic potential and the geography, you know, it's huge. Uh, the other, is, I think, important thing is that Pakistan in October, uh, or maybe late September onwards, had, uh, I think, plenty of diplomatic successes. You had the Russian Deputy Prime Minister, you have Prime Minister of Malaysia coming here, uh, recently, we had the Saudi delegation with $2 billion of investment. Uh, and then, of course, we are now expecting the Chinese Premier <coughs> and the Russian uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Mikhail uh, Mishustin, will be here, and Li Qiang, and then uh, all the heads of government. So all told, I think this is uh, – October has been very, very lucky and uh, successful uh, year, uh, month for Pakistan uh, uh, you know, diplomacy. And Pakistan then projecting itself uh, as a centerpiece. Uh, despite, you know, unfortunately, despite we have – Jay Shankar Saab will be coming, we welcome him. 
but india has been trying to you know basically isolate pakistan the region and look at today uh, i think india is highly isolated in sark region uh, generally nobody wants to talk to it so i think one thing is that the other is that it, this uh, sco summit also takes place uh, during three conflicts i would say one is the middle east which is our now affecting you know um, i would say global uh, supply chain it could affect the global energy to create a crisis then you have uh, you know war taking place in uh, you know eastern europe and then uh, there is a terrorism war going on uh, surrounding uh, afghanistan and in moscow format i think on 4th of october we had a very strong i think uh, message given to afghanistan to shut these factories so i think all told everything is moving in correct direction and uh, uh, pakistan definitely within the purview of sco i'm going to look at the larger objectives of cooperation in uh, you know education energy transport uh, environmental protection and then of course uh, rats Uh, which i think was mentioned by ambassador regional anti terror structure uh, so this i think is also going to be at the agenda and i'm sure there will be something about afghanistan that entire region is worried about it they would like to help afghanistan but uh, they have to i think walk the talk now and they have to stop you know uh, and they, i think there were names given uh, even, even in the uh, quadrilateral meet uh, in the un general assembly sidelines uh, that uh, these the organization have to shut their offices in afghanistan so all told i think we are uh, on for a uh good days and uh, pakistan hosting it so it's a very good news for pakistan and the region right absolutely and i'll come back to the issue of afghanistan as well but i want your take um with regards to my question uh with reference to india and the role that it can play as part of the sco summit and whether or not it is going to allow for that sort of multilateral collaborative approach that we're looking forward to as part of the sco given its bilateral relations with pakistan and china i mean india i think joined sco definitely you have to follow uh let's see larger uh, i would say uh aims and objectives of the organization so that's why you know uh, jashankar did say that there's going to be no bilateral thing but definitely uh, sco also talks of you know uh, regional cooperation and within that even uh, in terms of terrorism uh, when ever we have military exercise india does participate so th- definitely there is a scope and india has to see that uh, its isolation in south asia uh, can uh, actually be helped by pakistan Uh, if we it cooperates we have one major issue that is kashmir and now they're trying to raise the bogey of indus water i think uh, this time is gone of conflicts and uh, tension and uh, just look at the, you know the pipelines like iran pakistan india pipeline or taipi everything actually passes through pakistan so that's why it becomes a conduit of energy energy deficient india and china need you know and pakistan is the passage so and then there is you no know, bilateral trade could you know skyrocket but all depends on the intention unfortunately with the uh with i would say rss led government has to now see it that if they want to remain isolated as an island uh, then it's okay for them but maybe i think uh, they should uh, look at uh, sco's larger objectives and there's a huge uh, you know uh, let's say scope for cooperation in different fields and we are looking at you know poverty alleviation india also has almost you know in certain figures uh, 700 million people under a poverty line so i think that should be the area of focus so let's hope jay shankar saab comes and uh, we have some uh, good news uh, Absolutely. Uh, one last question, Brigid Devakar, with reference to the collective response that you talked about um, in terms of Afghanistan. Is there a collective understanding about that threat emerging from Afghanistan? Because while we, of course, can argue that this is something that impacts the region and potentially the world, but is that the understanding of the different member states as well for for a collective response to be allowed on that front too? Uh, now, if you look at uh, you know one of the leading members or the larger members of SCO. uh even in uh, quadrilateral meet they were there and then in moscow format is mainly you know it's basically russia china pakistan iran central asian republics and, and even india and we got the joint statement which came on 4th of october it was very very clear so it comes at the heels of uh, sco so it means that definitely this is going to be at the agenda everybody is worried uh, iranians are worried they're building billions of dollars of wall you know just to stop uh, terrorism russia was attacked you know uh, by isis then china is affected by you know uh eastern turkestan movement uh, and then even uzbekistan uh, and pakistan definitely so names were you know like uh, you know bla and these were named uh, ttp uh, daesh etc so i think uh, afghanistan is going to be on the agenda afghanistan also has an observer status in the sco and in case they have to let's say get integrated i think they have to uh, leave this uh, use of uh, terrorism as a tool of policy and uh, then uh, you know uh, become part of the larger uh, community and i think sco gives a huge platform to them also and maybe in case they mend their ways they can be offered a seat you know as a permanent member 
All right, thank you very much, uh, Brigadier Vakar, for joining us and uh, talking to us at length about the FCO. Um, Ambassador Joy, I'm going to ask you the similar question with reference to India, and Brigadier Vakar mentioned earlier the matter of intention, and that really is what, is what I want to focus on in terms of whether or not that is the approach that India is taking when we talk about collaboration or when we talk about multilateral engagement. Mm -hmm. um, because, of course, while uh, this, this summit is taking place, and of course, India is an important member, and we are seeing that there is a participation hopefully coming in as well, what exactly is the role that you've seen over the years that India has played and whether or not it will be able to overcome um, the kind of bilateral differences or conflicts that we have um, with India, uh, with Pakistan, China and India and to, and to see whether or not the core issues that affect all of us, such as climate change, such as trade investment, such as counterterrorism, will that ever be uh, something that you, you think in your perspective that India will be able to engage with sincerely and significantly? Yeah, that's a good question. That is because we have to recall that Pakistan and India joined SEO together, um, in a sense, in 2017. Before that, they were board uh, observers and dialogue partners. Um, so naturally, both were, both were keen to be part of this organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we have a lot of other countries who are keen to be part of this organization as well as dialogue partners. But the fact is, what we've seen is, after the initial keenness of India to become the full member of the organization, which it did in 2017, uh, we have seen in recent years, India losing some enthusiasm for SEO somehow. And how do we notice that? For instance, last year, India was to host a summit of SEO. So they decided to do it virtually yeah. rather than in person. And that was a little anomalous because before that, and, and uh, you know, in 20, 000, 2022 and 2022 and 2021, SEO summits were held in person uh, during the COVID times, you know, when the COVID was fairly higher than what it was in 2023. And still India chose to do it, um, you know, virtually or teleconferencely. Uh, um, and that was, uh, if that was one indication, then the other indications have been um, in the last meeting that ha was held in Astana that I mentioned, the SEO Summit of Heads of States, uh, which is the highest forum of SEO, we saw all the member countries participating at the top level. Um, the President Putin was there, President Xi Jinping was there, and all the, the presidents of the stands were there, the President of Iran was there, everyone. Not only the, the member countries' top leadership was there, but even the dialogue partners. For instance, President Erdogan of Turkey was there, Amir of Qatar was there, and many others who were not even full members. But India, chose to send Jay Shankar there, the mm. foreign minister. And it has become sort of a regular feature in some ways. Uh, the, normally for the heads of uh, government summits as well, India sends Jay Shankar, and we know that Jay Shankar will be coming for the summit. So, so there's, uh, there's some hints that India has been sort of, you know, like uh, walking back a little uh, from SEO, uh, not because of uh, anything to do with Pakistan, yeah. but because of its own geostrategic objectives and its, its own geostrategic priorities. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to do, go into the details of that, uh, but the fact is that that is happening one. Now, the second thing is when Jay Shankar mentioned, um, you know, in, through a public statement that he would be attending this, uh, this summit in Pakistan, um, he also said that he would not be having any bilateral meetings. That is one thing. Um, at the same time, you see, because in these conferences, it's a, it's a very you, common thing to have bilateral meetings on the sidelines. Um, sort of, you know, in, in fact, in all multilateral moods of this uh, level, this uh, high level, it happens. Uh, anyways, they have chosen not to have that. But what we hope is that India will um, participate, Jay Shankar would participate uh, with a positive spirit, uh, with a constructive approach, uh, with a constructive mindset, because SEO has so much to offer, not just to Pakistan, but also in India, and to each um, the member countries of this organization, because the trade, okay, India has a lot of trade with China. It has also a uh, significant trade with Russia, but it still needs to build its trade with the Stans, for instance, all the Central Asian republics. Uh, with Pakistan, of course, you know, in, in India, there are literally no trade presently, mm. and, uh, you know, other countries as well. Then again, in terms of security cooperation, in terms of, you know, they all, they keep on harping upon the theme of terrorism. Uh, now, this is a very important mechanism in all the countries as it has been mentioned. 
You know, they, they, they feel the threat emanating from Afghanistan, for which a regional approach needs to be adopted by the, all the countries. This summit taking place on the heels of the uh, quadrilateral meeting that Brigitte Saab mentioned on the 4th of October. Uh, and, and, and there, the, the joint statement uh, reiterated that, the, the, you know, the need for a regional approach, for need for a coordinated approach. And, and if India is interested, if, seri if they are seriously interested, then they need to, um, they want to be there. And similarly, in terms of, for instance, climate resilience challenge, you know, because climate um, uh, challenge, climate related challenges, this, they see no, they observe no borders, and they, they observe no boundaries, mm. and they have to be dealt by the countries together because they are a common threat, a common challenge. Similarly, um, you know, poverty alleviation. Now, that is some, somewhere the, uh, an area where all the countries can really um, coordinate and collaborate and, uh, and, and in some ways help each other. And, 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 and you know, so many other areas. And that is why I believe that India uh, ha needs to take uh, a very constructive approach uh, rather than sort of, you know, any approach which would um, not help this organization, this very important organization, carry forward the very important agenda it carries. Absolutely, and, and that's, that's significant, uh, particularly when we look at this but, uh, summit as well. Um, and Farooq, I want your uh, take on this as well. Um, and you, you have an opinion about um, Jay Shankar's participation uh -huh. as well, and would like to um, also express uh, what sort of participation um, or involvement that we can actually hope. We've seen that um, statements have come out uh, very clearly about how there is going to be no uh, sideline bilateral engagement with Pakistan. And of course, SEO is not a bilateral summit, but there are uh, 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 bilateral engagements that have uh, that have occurred previously and that have resulted um, historically in a lot of uh, improvements, especially in terms of border ties with Central Asian states. Um, whether or not that actually happens with India, but do you see any possibility uh, of engagement, particularly in the economic front, um, that we can actually explore through the SEO summit or whether or not um, that seems to be uh, something that India might actually be interested in? Uh, right. Uh once again, Sana, uh, you know, this is a diplomatic moment. Uh, I don't want to actually spoil it by, by you know, uh, talking trash about uh, Jay Shankarji. But my humble submission is that when it comes to India, uh, Indian government ha has this pattern. Whenever they want to actually celebrate some forum or they want to take up credit or magnify it, they send their prime minister. Whenever they want to have a com combative posture, or they want to downplay it, they send Jay Shankar. Jay mm. Shankar is a career diplomat, but he is a man who rose from his own department and then gutted it, right? So um, I don't have too, uh, too much expectation from his visit. Okay. That is one thing that I've already said. By the way, we also committed a mistake. Uh, instead of Mo uh, inviting just Prime Minister Modi, had we sent another invitation to Gautam Adani, I'm sure both of them mm. would have come. Uh, but uh, regardless, uh, when it comes to uh, economic opportunity, it is a uh, no brainer uh, India has so much population. India has parts which are not developed. Uh, India needs to import things as well, and it needs oil, ac access to oil as well. Central Asia is right there. Pakistan is in the middle. Pakistan can work to, to with India, and they, we can work in tandem. Unfortunately, they keep on actually spoiling the opportunity. I don't know what exactly is going on in their minds, but there is this pattern. You were talking about bilaterals and multilaterals. Yeah. Usually at such forums, when Jai Shankarji actually comes, uh, it is a unilateral uh, you know, visit. They just come, they speak, and they go away. Right? Uh, regarding uh, m m overall connectivity and opportunities in the region, when I pointed out that uh, uh, almost half of the world's population lives here, imagine how much good can be done when yeah. we all work together. Uh, and by the way, uh, regarding India, something very interesting is happening, and Ambassador Dasab correctly actually pointed out as well. India is part of Quad. India is also part of I2U2, right? Uh, elements which are particularly focused at containing one of these elements, uh, the two gated powers inside and uh, SEO. India is also has also signed BACA with America, Lamoa, and umpteen other uh, agreements of the sort, strate of strategic nature. 
The question then is, what is it doing in SEO, right? Could it be out of spite of Pakistan that it has to be there? Or then these two big countries like uh, China and America, uh, China and Russia, wouldn't they be thinking whether India is there to spy on them, <laughs> right? So yes. with that kind of state of affairs, I don't see a lot of hope. I, you know me, I'm uh, an incorporable optimist. But the problem is that whatever I'm seeing has been taught to me by the Indian state itself in the past 11 years. And I've seen that repeatedly, Modi ji, wa he wants to come, he will come to a wedding ceremony of a prime minister's daughter's uh, daughter, or granddaughter for, for that matter. Or if he does not want to come, he will actually boycott any kind of forums. Uh, so they have already destroyed Sark, uh, you know, body because India refused to come to Pakistan and that has been continuing for quite some time. Mm. I think s when Sushma Swaraj, the former boss of Jai Shankar actually was there, she, despite the fact that she used to be called a firebrand and very uh, Hindutva oriented woman, but she was so diplomatic and nice when she, when she came to Pakistan. But I don't think India does nice any longer. Mm. So I don't think that we, uh, we can actually keep on fooling ourselves that there is some hope right yeah. now. It, there isn't really. Right, that is of course unfortunate, but we really uh, hope that there is something that can possibly happen in the future. And of course, we have high expectations from the SEO Summit as well, uh, whether or not uh, in, uh, it's, uh, there is any involvement with regards to India. But we, of course, hope to see that the member states continue to thrive and that this platform actually results in benefit for all. We're also going to be focusing a little bit on the International Day of the Girl Child, uh, which is being observed world over today. And it's important, particularly in terms of what we can do for the girl child and how we can make the world a safe and better place for them. And Ambassador Sab, I'll take your perspective on that first and of course in relation with Pakistan uh, because it's extremely important in our country as well um, in, in providing that sort of security uh, to um, our, our females, to the girl child and not just in terms of um, their protection but also in terms of um, being secure in all forms in terms of opportunities, in terms of what they can do and achieve. Um, and there is so much, uh, of course, uh, that they have done and we've had numerous examples of that in the past as well. Uh, but however, unfortunately, we see that there are major obstacles that a certain gender faces. Um, and so because of that, uh, a lot of what they can achieve is limited. And I want your take in terms of when we talk about what we can do for them, what are those key aspects that need to be, uh, to be that we need to really focus on and that perhaps we've ignored? Yeah, that is very important because women um, and the girl child, that's half of our population. And um, the very important half. Um, unfortunately, what we see is that on, on the one hand, Pakistan has been rated as one of the countries in the world uh, where the girl child or the women face most challenges. Mm. So that is some food for thought for us. On the other hand, what we see is that we've had uh, a woman prime minister long before, uh, you know, many other countries in the West had women prime ministers. We have quota for women parliamentarians, whereby one third uh, of the members of parliament have to be women. Similarly, in a lot of other institutions, we in try to ensure that there's greater participation for women uh, by ensuring co uh, sometimes quotas and, and many other measures. So we see uh, improvement. Uh, and and, and our, in our universities, what we see that now half of the sort of you know, student body constitutes uh, females. So all that is there. And, and they are uh, actually getting better grades than their male counterparts. So that is a ray of hope. But s s having stated that, I believe we still have very many challenges particularly as we move out from the big cities, um, you know, and, and the towns and, and, the, and, and the rural areas, then these challenges become much greater. And when we talk about women empowerment, mm. you know, I think there are key uh, areas where we need to work, for instance. Uh, when I say in our universities, there are an equal number of women um, or sort of, you know, like uh, girls now, that is, these universities are mostly in bigger cities, you know. When we talk about rural areas, then the population of sort of students, female students, drastically drops. And in some parts of Pakistan, it's abysmally low. Uh, similarly, in terms of protection, 
um, in, their, in terms of their physical protection or in terms of the protection of their legal rights or in terms of the protection of sort of you know the social rights in many of these areas there's a lot we need to do then again in terms of their participation in many many vocations um, you know a cross section of our sort of you know like society uh, we still you know there's a lot to be desired um, mm. in many very many areas we, we still see that there's an embryonic level of participation of women so i believe that pakistan is a country which is very cognizant of um, the fact which you know the way the women are given a lot of respect as well right but at the same time they they they, they are very challenged in certain areas and there's a great deal of need for um, sort of you know for very many more measures right. um, for sort of you know protection of their rights and mm. women empowerment absolutely there's a long way to go and farooq i want your perspective on this as well because uh, you're a father of two beautiful and smart girls mm. and i want your perspective in terms of whether or not you think that they're able to live their best authentic life um and what can we do um for daughters such as yours um in pakistan for them to be able to do that uh, right uh, once again thank you very much sana i would uh, would have rather that you actually spoke on the matter and i'll listen rather than you are uh, soliciting my comments because you are a girl on this panel <laughs> just sure, uh, just a boy let's get your but i'm going to yes. because you are you have asked a question i'm just going to say one thing uh, yes i am a proud uh, uh, you know girl daddy and i uh, think that uh, they live in cities so they uh, they have many uh, access to many amenities which other kids might not have but whether they are in good condition or bad does it change what where exactly we are at right now in pakistan i think th the biggest problem with pakistan society is that there is uh, uh, you know structural uh, misogyny and mm. there is stru uh, structural and institutionalized you know violence against women that doesn't seem to go away if uh, ambassador sabe said once upon a time we used to have a pr uh, female prime minister and we were very proud of proud of her but surprise surprise how did she die because of violence uh, uh, if you to if you are a foreigner and you think about pakistan who comes to mind malala yousafzai why why did she get uh, so uh, prominent because she stood up for education and she was shot yeah. right so one has to actually come come to terms with the realities of life as well i think that repeatedly perhaps because of our beggar uh, 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 pre colonial you know tribal and feudal and pastoral background this structural violence hasn't gone away and in many ways our institutions and we as a whole have failed our girl, girl children yeah. and I, i i wish the kind of you know education my kids have uh every girl got uh, in this country but that is not what is happening right now uh remember that in sawad when malala was shot at that time uh, sufi mohammed was there mm. and they actually tried to uh, you know convince people not to send their ch daughter to school why is it that we haven't been able to resolve this this complication in mm. the religious interpretation absolutely like afghan taliban keep on doing it and that can perfectly happen here and india in india and in bangladesh and we are not in south asia right so there's something about south asia i hope next year when we are talking about this matter mm. i can be more optimistic mm. of course the state of pakistan keeps on trying yeah. but still it's a long long way absolutely absolutely it's a very very long way to go and we hope that we can do much much more uh, for uh, the girl child in pakistan and for all women all over the world thank you farooq and thank you ambassador for joining us in the debate today that's all that we have time for we'll now see you tomorrow